So we are going to do all our sums for this function on the interval zero to two using four sub intervals. Now, if it, first thing you're gonna do is make a table. That's why I left all this space here and then use your table to answer all the questions. As a side note, if your table's wrong, but all of your answers match your table, then I can give you credit for those. So like, no matter what, don't be a, a giver upper. First, we need to figure out like how many numbers we need to put on our table. So from zero to two is, you know, two units. If you divide that into four sub intervals, two divided by four, we 0.5, that would be a half. However, we can't count by halves. We're actually gonna have to count by fourths. And why would I need to break it down even smaller than the halves? Like which sum is like causing us to have to do that? Hold on, let me, let me stop writing a second. Let's have a conversation about that because I think I lost everyone. Do you get that the interval's two units long? Okay, and you're dividing that into four pieces. Two divided by four is a half. But I can't count by halves. I have to count by fourths because of the midpoint sum. You're gonna need the one in the middle. If midpoint sum wasn't on here, you could just count by halves. But because there's a midpoint sum on there, you're gonna need to count by fourths. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, this is four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and then eight fourths is two. All right, now this is gonna be the not super fun part. You have to take all those numbers and do what with them? Plug them in, we'll get through it together. You're gonna to be okay. Sometimes, do you remember that warm up we did last week? Sometimes on the AP exam, they make you do ridiculous stuff without a calculator. So it's a good skill to have. Zero, if you plug in zero, what are you gonna get? Three, Three. good, that one's not bad. Here, do you wanna do the easy ones first? Let's do one. I like to do the easy stuff first and then feel like I've gotten started. If you plug in one, you're gonna have 16 plus eight plus three. Is that 27? And if you plug in two, two squared is four times 16 would be 64 <laughs> plus, what is that? Plus 16 plus three. So is that 83? All right, now let's go back and get the ones in between. It won't be as bad as you're thinking, okay? If you plug in a fourth, a fourth squared, close, is 1 16th times 16 be one. I'm just gonna write these off to the side here. A fourth times eight. A fourth of eight is two, and then plus, they're all gonna have a plus three at the end. So that's, uh, what is that, six? All right, let's plug in a half. A half squared, a fourth, a fourth of 16 is four, plus half of eight is four. And then again, they're all gonna have plus three at the end. So what is that, 11? All right, let's do three fourths. Three fourths squared would be, You take three fourths and square it. No. Nine sixteenths, that'd be nine sixteenths times 16 would just be nine. The sixteenths are gonna cancel. All right, plus eight uh, times three fourths. Eight times three is 24 divided by four is six. And then they all have plus three at the end. What is that, 18? All right, five fourths. Five fourths squared would be 25 sixteenths. But what happens? Good, it would just be 25, the sixteenths cancel. Plus, all right, five fourths times eight. Eight times five. Eight times five is 40, very good. Divided by four is 10 and then plus three. So 38, we're almost there, right? Three halves squared would be nine fourths. Let me write that down. Let me just show you what it looks like. If you do 16 divided by four, like a fourth of 16, you get four times nine, 36. Do you notice anything too about like what's going on here? Like with numbers, like 
Like, do you see all those are perfect squares? Like patterns, math, anyway. Three halves times eight. Eight times three is 24 divided by two. 24 divided by two, guys, is 12 plus three. 51. All right, one more. Seven fourths squared would be 49 sixteenths. The sixteenths cancel. So, oh my gosh, 49. All right, eight times seven would be 56 divided by, well, you know what? I don't want to do 56 divided by four. Maybe divide by four first. Eight divided by four is two. And then two times seven is 14 and then plus three. 66? That is 66, yeah. Oh, I guess it was back to back. Yeah, 66, yeah. I had to check. Okay, so what you want to do, there should be four sub intervals. So go ahead and circle your sub intervals. Don't be too proud to draw your circles. Okay, those are your four sub intervals. And now I'm going to hit pause and I want you to try and do the rest of the first page and then we'll go over it together. Oh. You don't have to simplify any, in fact, do not simplify anything. If you do that, I'm gonna have to set my answer key aside and stop what I'm doing and try and figure out if it's correct. Just don't simplify them, okay? All right, so what is the length of each sub interval? Cause they're all the same, one half. Okay, that's not gonna change. Like they're all a half, all right? So for the right Riemann sum, we're gonna use the numbers on the right. That should be 11 plus 27 plus 51 plus 83. Cool? Okay. And then the left one would be one half and then three plus 11 plus 27 plus 51. And then the one in the middle would be one half and then six plus 18 plus 38 plus 66. And then trapezoidal. So there's a one half in the formula, just like that's the formula for the area of a trapezoid. And then times the length of your sub interval, which just so happens to also be a half. And then how do you write out your sum of numbers? The outside ones are just once, all the inside ones are twice because they're shared between the intervals. So it'll be three plus double 11, double 27, double 51, and then the 83 just once, okay? Set up, but do not evaluate, a definite integral to find the exact area under the curve. So it would be integral from where to where? What are your boundaries of your interval? Okay, zero to two, and then it's the function. So 16x squared plus eight x plus three. And then what goes at the end? Dx. Do you remember how we, that's it. Do you remember how we type them in the calculator? It's math. Nine, as foreshadowing the lesson for today, I'm gonna show you how to evaluate that without the calculator. That's what we're learning today, okay? So go ahead and flip over. These were your properties mm -hmm. and your antiderivatives. So areas under the curve. So I'm gonna pause again. I want you to try this side and then we'll go over it together. All right, so I went and drew those graphs while you guys were working just to kind of move things along here. Um, number six. We uh, have integral from two to seven and we have two to 12 and we're being asked about seven to 12. I would write this out. Integral from two to seven f of x dx plus integral from seven to 12 f of x dx. You see what I'm doing there? From two to seven plus seven to 12 would give you from where to where? Two to 12. And if you can do this without writing that out, that's fine. A right answer is a right answer. I don't need to see this if your answer is right, but you know this is the property where that's coming from. All right, from two to seven, we were given that's negative three. From seven to 12 is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna just call that X. That's like the missing one. And from two to 12 was eight. So negative three plus what gives you eight? 11 is your answer. Okay, or if you just were like, hey, Miss Cole, it's eight plus three, duh. Okay, well, fine, but that's the reason why you get the answer you got. All right, find the area under the graph of X plus three. Slope is one, up one, over one, and we start at zero, three. So this is what that graph looks like. We want the area from one to four. What shape did we get? 
a trapezoid and it's on its side. Okay, this is the height. So area formula for a trapezoid is one half times the height. So what is the length of the interval basically is what we're looking at. This distance here is three. And then what? Good. All right. So this one is four and then plus seven. Perfect. Did anyone simplify that? Probably don't. Okay. All right. Here, absolute value of X. That's your V-shaped graph. We want the area from negative two to six. You ended up with two triangles. How do you do the area of a triangle? Good. Base times height. One half base times height. For this one, the base and the height are both two. And then for the other one, the base and the height are both six. Oh, that was a lousy six. Let me fix that. Cool? Good so far? All right. Down here, you're given the graph. So let's do the area of this first triangle. One half base times height. What is the base for that one? Eight. Good. Says the person that wasn't even here. And then the height is three. Now I would actually work that out. Half of eight, four times three, 12. Now this is a semicircle. How would you do that area? We will need a radius in there. How do you do a whole circle? Pi r squared. So this would be one half pi r squared and the radius is two. So two squared is four, half of that is two. Now it's actually negative two pi. Why is that? The low C level. It's like a un area. You want to think of it as accumulating area and it is a deaccumulation. All right, once you have those, you just use them to answer the questions. Integral from negative six to positive six. Well, that's the whole thing. So what would you put? 12 minus two pi. This is negative six to six, but there's an absolute value. That means you treat all the areas like they're positive. So it would be 12 plus two pi. And then this one goes from two to negative six. So you're going from here to here. You're going backwards. So negative 12, it's like an anti 12, un 12, it is 12 backwards. All right, and then these are your anti derivatives. What do you put at the end of every single one of these? Plus C, it's really important, all right? You need a function that this would be the derivative. It's like, that's the answer you want the question. What's your antiderivative of e to the x? Yeah, e to the x, fantastic. Minus, now cover up the three. You add one to the power and divide by it. So it would be x to the six, and you'd have a one sixth out front. Are you coming with me then? But it would actually be three six, which is a half, one half x to the six plus c. You can always check these by doing the derivative. If you do the derivative of this, you should get what's there. All right, how about the next one? Four x, good, plus one third x cubed plus c. This one we're going to rewrite before we do the problem. I'm not going to do the problem yet, so I'm going to leave the integral symbol and the dx in there. How would you rewrite three over x to the fourth? Yeah, and I'm going to bring the three out as well, but you guys are correct, x to the negative four. If you want to leave the three in there, that's fine. That comes down to personal preference. But remember, you can never take a variable outside, only the coefficient. All right, so I'm going to cover this up. You're going to add one to the power. It makes it less negative. So it would be x to the negative three. That means you would need a negative one third out front. But negative a third times three is just negative one plus c.